horses. Are your parents around? I don't know where my mommy and daddy are. It's been four years since the bite of 83. Norman Afton Did you eat that, Freddy? is dead. Charlotte Emily Happy birthday, Norman. is dead. Michael Afton is in jail. And William and Henry have just opened the all-new Freddy Jr.'s location, featuring state-of-the-art toy animatronics. Horrified by the events that had transpired under his watch, Henry insisted that William outfit these new robots with facial recognition software, capable of apprehending any criminal who entered the restaurant. In the wake of this tragedy, Henry would ensure that nothing bad would happen at Freddy's ever again. Be sure you well, that's fine by me, Mr. Eveli. Hey, do me a favor. When you get to hell, tell Charlie and Norman I send my regards, you stupid bastard. This place is going to hell and- No, it was me. Every man has to go through hell to reach his paradise. No, 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 Prince, what the fuck are the robots doing now? Who are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Follow me, boys and girls. Hello, fellow Fazbear Entertainment employee. Today, we will begin by going over the introduction and basics of becoming a night guard at our upcoming restaurant, Freddy Jr.'s. Before we get started, we'd like to clear up any rumors or conspiracies that you may have heard about the restaurant. Fazbear Entertainment does not condone any violence towards children. The owners would like to clarify that they are not responsible for any death or mutilation occurring at the restaurant and further apologize for the events which took place on July 21st, 1983. Once again, we'd like to welcome you to the team. As a night guard, you'll work weekdays from midnight to 6 a.m. The graveyard shift may sound scary and overwhelming at first, but Fazbear Entertainment can assure you that there is absolutely nothing to worry about. Your job is to watch over the building using our CCTV security system and make sure nothing gets in or out. Compared to the robots at the old location, our new toy animatronics are incredibly high tech. They've been given facial recognition systems in order to locate criminals within our database. They've also been given advanced mobility that allows them to walk around during the day and entertain the customers. Once again, we can assure you that there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Don't you think anyone has been trying to sabotage us lately? Henry, relax. It was just a glitch in the system. If anything, I can fix it. No big deal. It's okay. I, I just... We can't have another malfunction like this. This is our second weekend, and I want everything running as smoothly as possible. I know, and that's why I made these toys special, so nothing bad happens. I can assure you, no one is going to get hurt. Okay. Well, well listen, William, how are you feeling so far during this whole- I'm fine. What do you mean? Well, we're already this far. I just- I just want to make sure you're not thinking about more- Henry, please. While William seemed to have gotten over the loss of his son Norman, Henry wasn't doing so well. The man had begun to lose his grip on reality, growing excessively paranoid, haunted by the tragedies of Fredbear's family diner. Unfortunately, just moments later, Henry's fears are stoked by the arrival of the daytime security guard Fritz, who's here to report an incident. Don't worry about me or my kids. I'm not- Good morning, boss. Hello, Mr. Afton. Ah, good to see you, Fritz. How's the birthday party going out there? Oh, it's going great. Nothing to be worried about. However, the toys on stage are acting unusual because... See, I told you, William! Christ, calm down! What happened, Fritz? Oh, well, uh, during one of the songs, the toys just froze and looked straight at this Jessie kid, you know, the birthday girl, and it ended up making her cry, but after a few seconds, they got back to singing. It's that damn facial recognition system Henry had me put into those animatronics. Hey, those facial recognition scanners were necessary, Will. We can't have any crazy criminals or murderers in our place. Furthermore, they've also been having issues with the nighttime security guard, Jeremy Fitzgerald. How did Jeremy do last night? I called him last night to check on him and give him tips since tonight will be his fourth night on the job. He's doing pretty good so far, but I'm not sure he'll make it through next week. The dude is terrified those toys are going to kill him. He doesn't like how these ones walk around compared to the ones we had at Fredbear's where they were just bolted to the floor. Well, Mr. Fitzgerald is going to have to suck it up if he wants his paycheck. That night, the evening security guard Jeremy gets a call from Fritz with some bad news. Hello? 
Hey, you made it. Night four. Hey, you're almost to the weekend, man. Well, it definitely doesn't feel like a Thursday, but whatever. What's up? Well, I wanted to call you earlier and let you know as soon as possible, but, um... Well, uh... We've got a situation. Did I see something wrong? No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're fine. It's just yesterday someone tampered with the animatronics and, uh... Well, to put it short, shit may get real. What do you mean, shit may get real? What does that mean? They're not gonna come after me, are they? I... I honestly don't know. I think you'll be fine, but just keep an extra eye on the cameras tonight because I really don't want the police to come back in tomorrow. Wait, 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 wait. Why were the cops here today? What happened? Oh, crap. Uh, l listen, I gotta go. I'll talk to you tomorrow. For some reason, the police were at Freddy's earlier that day. Huh. While outwardly, William Afton appeared to be cold, calculating, and level-headed, another side of him was the exact opposite. Between his first taste of murder back in 1983, as well as post-traumatic stress disorder from his time in the Vietnam War, Afton moves to kill again. I'm gonna lose it, man. I don't care anymore. I... I can't keep doing this. It was me. I killed her, Henry. You know it was me! Just kill me! I gotta do it again! I'm gonna f do it again! <sighs> this time... <laughs> it's gonna be so beautiful! Gabriel and Susie are spending the evening at Freddy's alongside their friend Cassidy when a strange mascot they've never seen before approaches. It almost looks like Bonnie, but it's golden. Hi, kids. Hi. Um, are you a part of Freddy's band too? Oh, I'm, um, I'm an old friend of Freddy and his gang. What are your names? Uh, I'm Gabriel and this is Susie. And those are our friends over there reading at the table. How precious. Are your parents around? I don't know where my mommy and daddy are. I see. Tell you what, while your food's getting ready, why don't I show you something really cool? Would you like that? Sure, as long as we can come back and eat our pizza while it's still hot. Oh, I promise you won't have any cold pizza today. Follow me, boys and girls! Mister, it's kind of dark in here. Where are we? You're in my special little world. A magical place full of happiness and wonders you couldn't even begin to imagine. You know, kids, I had a friend many years ago tell me something I never forgot before he died in that jungle. He told me that we could forgive a child who's afraid of the dark. But the real tragedy of life is when men are afraid of the light. So let me ask you, children, are you afraid of the dark? Gabriel, I'm scared. I think we should go. <laughs> That evening, a few hours after they spoke, Fritz gets a frantic phone call from Jeremy. Pick up the phone, please, 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 Fritz, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. Hello? Okay, dude, is this what you were talking about? Uh, what's going on? I got the bunny and the chicken looking right at me. The person, the person service room cameras disabled. Please tell me I'm going to be okay. Wait, the park 
access service room cameras disabled? Ah, oh, shit. Fritz, what the f*** are the robots doing, man? Well, I told you shit was gonna get real. Look, did you hear about what happened today? No, what happened? Well, we're probably gonna be closed for the next week because... Well, I don't actually know what happened. All I know is that we're going under investigation. This place is going to hell, and... Listen, just finish your shift, and I'll get your paycheck on Sunday. Fritz, wait! Horrified by the toy animatronics, Jeremy decides he's had enough. However, when he goes to collect his paycheck the next day, he discovers that the building is on lockdown. Jeremy? Hello? I'm coming to pick up my paycheck, and then I'm going home. Don't even bother, man. The building's on lockdown. What do you mean? I thought you said we'd be closed next week. No, dude. Someone took one of the spare suits in the back. The yellow one, and they... Look, we've got one more event scheduled before the official lockdown. A birthday party. Can you be here tomorrow at 11 a.m.? Fine, I'll be there. But after that, I'm out. No more. Okay, whatever. Just please show up. After his terrifying encounter with the toy animatronics, Jeremy intended to quit, but it seemed that he would need to work one more birthday party in order to receive his paycheck. Things were going normally until Jeremy received reports that Toy Foxy was missing. Hey Fritz, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? Uh, what do we do with that white Foxy robot? The white? The mangle. Where's the mangle? It should be in there. Nobody touched it. Well, some kids said the animatronic from Kids Club was missing, and I'm in here, and I'm not seeing anything. All right, all right, hold on. Let me let me get a hold of William and Henry. Was that the bite of 87? After the events of November 12th and 15th of 1987, Freddy Jr.'s was shut down during its second week of the grand reopening. The families of Gabriel Martinez, Susie Collins, Jeremy Evans, Fritz Adams, and Cassidy Goldberg sued Fazbear Entertainment. The following year, owner Henry Emily was admitted to a psychiatric hospital. Authorities cannot come to a conclusion as to how an animatronic slaughtered a 22-year-old night guard. Daytime guard Fritz Smith is currently being held for questioning. Co-owner and head of security William Afton claims his associate, Henry Emily, was behind the killings at the restaurant and promises to return in 1992 to create the independent, new and improved, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. So, how was it? I don't know, Will. What do you think? Hey, hey, I'm just asking. So, do you feel any better? I mean, I haven't seen you in a while. How long's it been? Six years. It's been six years since we f***ed up. Well, I wouldn't say we. It was more of a technical difficulty. How the hell did you even get this place? Did they really let you set up this shop in this state, despite our names being in the headlines for months on end? Listen, I'm just as surprised as you are. I take it not a lot of exciting shit happens in New Jersey. Just imagine how exciting it would be for these people to eat in the restaurant that's earned itself a haunted legacy. Not to mention the money we're going to make. You know, William, that's your problem. It's always, hey, Henry, let's keep beating a dead horse and use missing children and dead employees for money. Oh, for God's sake, here you go again, bitching about what's right and wrong. It's not my fault your business failed because a couple of dorks went missing. Who bought cheap robots that ended up killing my son? Oh, and whose idea was it to add the facial recognition system that ended up killing that f***er back in 87, huh? You see, Henry, without me, you personally have nothing. For 17 years, I've been busting my ass building robots, investing my life savings, and just barely escaping lawsuits to make sure we have food on our tables and a roof over our heads. And now you say the troubles are my fault? 
You know what? Fuck you, asshole. When you're on the front lines, then you can start complaining about the so-called American dream. Will, you're my partner and my friend, but you've changed since I got back. You really have. I don't think I can work with you anymore. You can keep the place and everything that comes with it. I'm going home. Well, that's fine by me, Mr. Emily. Hey, do me a favor. When you get to hell, tell Charlie and Norman I send my regards, you stupid bastard. Can't remember your own son. That's impossible! My son is dead! I gotta tell you, this is one of the worst fire hazards I've ever seen. Shut your goddamn mouth, Michael! 